It is a joy to examine the stylistics of a Ramanujan poem. Because Ramanujan himself was obsessed with stylistics. He was a dedicated craftsman. And you never ever come across shoddy workmanship in his poetry. A river, like any other Ramanujan poem, is a well-crafted poem. We shall begin with the title. I have already spoken at some length about the title of the poem. The title of the poem plays a key role in generating the total impact of the poem. In a way, the title is the key to the poem. The poem under discussion has a title which is extraordinary, which becomes extraordinary by the simple act of being ordinary. A river is a modernistic poem. You must remember that Ekiramanujan was part of the first wave of modernist poets in Indian literature and English and this wave included Nizim Ezekiel and Kamala Das. Characteristically, A River is a free verse poem. A free verse poem avoids the metered line, the rhyme scheme and the regular arrangement of stanzas. This is precisely what we find in the poem under discussion. The diction of the poem is extremely appropriate. It is obvious that the poet has chosen his words with extreme care. It is said that Ramanujan used to agonize over his selection of words and this obsession with the perfect word burns through the entire poem. A free verse poem garners much of its strength from the manipulation of linear length. In the present poem, the manipulation of linear length is carried out by the poet with remarkable skill. There are long lines and there are short lines and there is the virtuoso juxtaposition of long lines and short lines. Similar is the case with the patterning of the stanzas of the poem. Take for example the last line of the poem which also forms the last answer of the poem. 
and this is a line which comprises just four words. The poet could very well have merged the last stanza of the poem with the penultimate stanza. But in that case, the conclusion of the poem would have lost much of its present punch. The poet makes brilliant use of figures of speech in the poem. Take for example the similes in the concluding lines of the second stanza of the poem. The wet stones glistening like sleepy crocodiles, the dry ones, shaven water buffaloes lounging in the sun. They are very original similes. And I think that this is for the first time that such comparisons have been worked out, at least in Indian literature. The wet stones are compared with sleepy crocodiles, while the dry stones are compared with shaven water buffaloes. Similarly, the poet makes excellent use of repetition throughout his poem. Please take a look at the first stanza of the poem. In Madurai, city of temples and poets, who sang of cities and temples, the repetition prepares the ground for what is to come. The repetition sets the mood of the entire poem. The repetition makes it clear that the speaker is saying everything he says in the poem with his tongue in his cheek. I don't know whether it would be a tad far-fetched, a tad far-fetched, if I claim that the poem under discussion is shaped like a flowing river. If you study the shape of a river, of a Kiramanujan, closely, you find that its shape closely resembles the shape of the Y guy during the floods. The poem is noteworthy for its vivid imagery. The graphic image of the Y guy, of the dry Y guy in summer, embodied in the second stanza of the poem, is an excellent exemplification of this.